chapter 5. I know we're technically supposed to do Romans chapter 4, but uh, not saying that uh, chapter 4 is not is not important, <clears throat> but um, I feel that it's the, um, an example or illustration of what we've covered through the first three chapters. So in order to move kind of move along, as we're not going to be able to finish the book any, anyways, um, kind of move to a little more uplifting uh, study this evening, and my goal is to get through the first 11 verses. So, Romans chapter 5. We're going to start a little backwards. Um, we'll read verses 5, 6, 8, and 10. And hope maketh not, make sure I was in the right spot, and hope maketh not ashamed, because of the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Five, six, eight. But God commandeth his, commandeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then if you would move down to verse 10. For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his son much much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life so how many of us have gone out and applied for a job at least most everybody what's one of, what's one of the big things you want to look at the benefits right what benefits come with this job let me use the job as a example as we move move forward through these first four, these four verses. So, some feedback. What are some benefits that you, some specific benefits that you look for in a job? Yes, Health brother. Insurance. Health insurance. That's a huge one in these days. Yes. Vacation days. Vacation days. Sick days. Sick days. 401k. Some good examples, but how many of those jobs with those, with those are pretty much the big ones that come readily available. You don't have to wait a trial period. You don't have to uh, have 10 years experience to get so much of a, a vacation time. How many jobs come with those benefits fully ready and ready to go the minute you step on the job? Very few, if any, right? Uh, especially when you're not qualified for it. When Jesus came to the earth and died for us, he offered benefits for us. Benefits that we aren't qualified for, benefits that we don't deserve, and there's no waiting period, there's no uh, let, let's see if you can make it type thing. It's if you accept the offer, the benefits are already there. All you have to do is accept it. Our debt as sinners has already been paid. The benefit of accepting Christ by faith, benefits of accepting Christ by faith are already in place. So what I want to do tonight is look at some of those benefits. And they're not, they're not time off. They're not uh, health care. Um, but they're... Um, spiritual benefits and benefits that I think are, I think you would agree, better than those that a job could offer. So let's see here. We'll do a little bit different, get some more involvement. Ashley, I'll get use you. If you would please read verse 1 of chapter 5. So the first benefit is peace. How important is peace to you? Everybody wants peace. Um, for those that are, are in high school, they're tired of the drama. When you get out of high school, go to college, you're tired of uh, uh, exams and studies and all the drama that comes there. And then you get to adulthood, and you're not done with drama. It just changes into something a little bit different. You're done with having to worry about bills, and then you're, you have kids, you're worried about your kids, and so on and so forth. But peace, peace is something that, uh, true peace is something that this world can't give us. Christ, Christ's justification provides us a peace that passes all understanding. We have peace because, because we don't have to worry 
about God's wrath on Judgment Day. If you would, flip over to Isaiah 32. Isaiah 32, verse 17. Isaiah 32, 17 says, And the work of righteousness shall be peace, and the effect, the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. I do find it kind of ironic that they put quietness in there with peace. I guess that's another joke to put on for next week. Anyways. But anyways, the righteousness of, of God brings peace because of what he did on the cross. We have, And that peace may seem to be taken from us at times when we go through things in life, but it can, it'll never be fully taken from us. We may go through struggles in life where it feels like we're in constant turmoil, turmoil or whatever, but we always have that peace. Let's see. Brother Phil, would you read the first part of verse 2 of Romans chapter 5, please? By whom also? access by faith. If we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, we have access to God. Full access. Um, we can't even, on, on this earth, we can't even get full access as a ticket ticket buyer or uh, if we, um, we'll just stick with that one, to an athlete such as Michael Jordan, LeBron James, uh, for me, Roy Williams or the Tar Heels, even as a paying person buying tickets, we can't get full access to those people. And we pay for it. Yet Jesus came to this earth, paid for our sins, and we have full access through him to God the Father. Because of your faith. As a, um, I, it's been a while, as, as a corporal or sergeant in the Marine Corps, the, those below, the, Lance corporals, PFCs, privates, they don't have full access to the corporals and sergeants and to speak freely to us. If they speak, get out of line, we're going to smack them around. We're going to put them back in their place. We can go to God with whatever we need to. We have full access. It doesn't say you can only ask for these things. You have to address me this way or, or put regulations on us. It's full access. Hebrews 14, 6, Hebrews 4, 16 says we can go boldly to him. We can ask for, for it. In the Bible, there's numerous scriptures throughout the Bible that ask about asking specific for specifics, taking it to him. If you have faith in him, he'll, he'll provide it. And it may not be, may not always get the answer that you're looking for, but God answers those prayers. Let's see here. I'll read the second part of verse 2 of, back in Romans 5. Be nice if I get there. And rejoice in, in hope of the glory of God. What the, the, third, the third, benef third benefit is hope. Jer Jeremy mentioned the country. This isn't the example I have written down. But Jeremy mentioned the country in, the, in New York and then just passing that new law. There's nothing you can really put true hope in these days. Uh, the, the thing going on over there in, um, Co in Covington with the schoolboys and the thing that happened in D.C. with the demonstration or whatever. I'm not getting into details. But the people that were supposed to back them, they, couldn't even, they can't even put their hope in them because they've failed them. They let them down. There's only one person, I believe I put the, uh, only one person that we can have true hope in no matter what's going on in our life, no matter how down we are, um, we have hope in Christ. Uh, if I could get, let's see, Zach, can you turn over to 1 John chapter 3? And then uh, I'll go to the other one. 
First Thessalonians four. Yes, verses 2 and 3. Every man that put their faith in, Christ, in Jesus Christ has hope. Despite their their sin, and then in First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians four verses thirteen through eighteen it says, "But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that which." That which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from, the he from heaven with a, with a shout and with, with a voice of the archangel, archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. How high? How how often do you hear about the suicide rate in the country? It's it's high, especially among teenagers right now, uh, especially among service members. And here recently, uh, it's been been among um, the cops, the first responders, because of things they see. Um. No matter what's going on in your life, God made a promise that he would come get us. We have something to live for. We have something to live for in serving him. We have the best hope in the world. It may be hard and very trying at times here on earth, and you may just want to quit. But as believers, we have hope through faith to look forward to the day that the Lord comes to take us home to be with him forever and ever. We don't have to worry about the God's wrath. We don't have to worry about uh, things that happen on earth. We have hope that one day we will be with him. Verse 5, back in Romans. And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost which is given unto us. The next benefit is God's love. And if you would, jump down to verse 7. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. I think what verse 7 is saying there, and it go, I think it goes with verse 5, is that there are some that we may die for. I would die for, excuse me, my wife, my kids, some family members, some um, friends, uh, and so on and so forth. But then you think of the ones that you definitely wouldn't jump in front of a bullet for. If you think about it, you don't know the person. Maybe somebody it's a person that's wronged you in the past. How many of us have wronged God? All of us. Yet, because of God's love, we have the opportunity. He's, God's love, he sent his son to die for us. That's something that we can have hope, uh, hope in. That's something we can believe in. That's something the reason why we have access is God's love. And then next is uh, verses three, four, and six in chapter five. And verse three says, "And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience and experience hope." Verse six. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. We have triumph in difficult times. God's love pr provides strength even though we were 
so undeserving of his love, grace, and mercy. The experiences, I think it's funny how at times we can, everything's great. We love God, we love God, God is great, God is great, God is great. And then things start to go awry. Things start going um, bad, if you will. But the experiences provide the tools to make you a better person for him and abilities to uh, help to reach something, to do things for, for Christ. Trials and tribulations are not something we like to go through, but, things, but think about the ones you've been through and how you came out of it as a person and as a Christian. The end game is what we need to keep in mind. We often get blinded by the here and now. We think about only what we're going through presently, and it's easy to do, I get it. But we need to try and think of what God's trying to teach us, what God's trying to do for us, how he's trying to grow us. Think about the things in your past that you went through and who has made you today. Verses 9 through 11. Much more than being now justified by, by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath, from wrath through him. For if we, if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received atonement. Because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross, because he took everything that we deserved, we no longer have to pay the price for our, our actions. We no longer have to worry about what God's, ju God's judgment, God's wrath upon us on the judgment day. And we can uh, do this um, with our, we can glor glory in this with our brothers and sisters in Christ as part of the reason um, doing the 15 minutes after Wednesday night service to hang out back here and we can, there's things we can talk about with each other. There's things that uh, God's done for us throughout the week that we can share with people. And glorifying it with each other. When a person accepts Christ as their Savior, the hostility between us and God ceases to exist and becomes a relationship of love and acceptance. If you would, look, uh, I think I'll just read it. 1 John 3, 1, verse 3, and verse 7. Verse 3 says, That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and true, truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. If you would jump down to verse 7, if you're following along. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. We can have fellowship with each other. It's more than, um, there's no... There shouldn't be. There should be a peace between myself and Jason, <coughs> myself and Brother Phil, my, and who, so on and so forth. There should be a peace there. There shouldn't be any strife. We can have fellowship with each other because of what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. We'll go over to John 5, 24. John 5, 24 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Because of what Jesus, God's love, he sent his son and reconciled us. We don't have to face God's wrath on judgment day. And for my, for my closing, closing um, look at 1 Corinthians 30. One verse thirty. If you would turn there, for those who have accepted him as their savior, we have no reason not to rejoice. We have the greatest benefits ever provided to us through our justification. First Corinthians one verse thirty and thirty-one says, "But of him are ye, 
in Christ Jesus, whom, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. We have the greatest benefits ever. But it's something that, I don't know if it's just getting older, and I know you hear other people say this, but getting older, you pay attention to the um, important things. The, the, not the, uh, I don't know how to explain it right now, but you pay more attention to things that actually matter versus things that in the long run don't matter. Does that make sense? When you, when things get tight financially, you're, you and your spouse go through things in a rough patch, which everybody goes through. If you think you don't, you just haven't hit it yet. Um, uh, you know, things happen in your family or whatever. Because of what Jesus Christ has done for you, you can get through those things and you can be happy in them. You can, uh, you know, we've had our financial struggles. Because of those, I believe we are stronger together. We can get through the next thing that happens easier maybe so to speak uh, maybe she'll deny that later but I think so and I'm going to die to take that to my grave but because of what God's done for us because of the benefits he provides us we can't get anything better anywhere else there is nothing better make sure I make that clear Not shouldn't go looking there is nothing better we don't deserve these benefits you can't go to a job, get full benefits with everything, all inclusive, and not have any experience in that. We don't have any experience, our experience being any desert or anything deserving of these benefits. Yet God provided them for us anyways. So I'd ask that maybe this week, this week you take a look at what God's done for you, what God's what God provides you, and and take time to let the emotion build up in you, and then be grateful for it, be happy about it, be go talk to somebody and share share something that God's done for you. Be happy about it, share the hope. Dear Lord, thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight, Lord. Thank you that. Uh, you allowed the weather to clear up, Lord. Lord, I ask that you would reach into our hearts, that you would show us the, the benefits that you provide us, Lord. And th these are just a few of them, Lord. There is numerous and numerous more, Lord. Lord, you always keep your promise. You never let us down. And, we, and we're so undeserving of it, Lord. Lord, I thank you for everything you've done, Lord, in my life. I thank you for everything you've done in my family's life. And for those that are here tonight, Lord, in their lives as well, Lord. Lord, I ask that you be with the fellowship time afterwards. Help us to grow together, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.